Yay. Aim and ho! Thank you, Susie. Thank you. Can you see me? I can't yes. see you because um, I have to use a different phone. Let me have a look. Yes, you're fine there, Eamon. I know you were slightly concerned about the framing because it's not like you've done very much television in your life, is it? No, but as I look at you, all I can see is my mouth. I can't see anything above my mouth. But if you can see everything, I'm gorgeous, as you can see. Well, you That's are. Amazing. You're always divine. I can see up to sort of top of your forehead. I think we're happy with that. We're okay with that. It means the comments won't cover you so much. Is that any better? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. The Georgie Lodger says yeah. perfect because he can see real time. I can only see in okay. delay, which is generally what okay. I'm like in life. Perfect. Okay. Very so, good. So, so just let me understand something, Susan. I haven't seen you in, in a while. Susan! Are you, are you really on the French Riviera? I most certainly am. Or, or is it a green screen? <laughs> <laughs> or is it a green but I thought you were in Wolverhampton. Well, I am in Wolverhampton a lot of the time, um, but I have a little house on the French Riviera, and this oh is where my. I happened to be when it all kicked off. So I thought, well, you know what, I'll stay here. Well done. Yes. Well done. So I'm very fortunate. Um, I've got a, a nice little garden and a bit of ground and some space, and we're hidden away here, uh, burrowed away in the side of a mountain. So it's it's actually we're very lucky. We're good. It's very peaceful here, uh, apart from looks obviously having a lodger who's a Geordie. I mean, what's peaceful about that? Yeah, yeah. How are you? Well, are you well? I'm I'm um, I'm I'm all right. I'm I'm all right. Like everybody else, a bit of a groundhog day, and um, you know, you try to be productive and you try to to do things, and you know, it's very inventive what you're doing there. Um, but nobody earns any money. You know, you just do these things and we all go slowly broke. No. Um, <laughs> but the, the, main, the main thing is, you know, to keep, to keep well. I miss family. I miss not getting back to Belfast. And, um, I, I, you know, I worry about my mum and, and all sorts of things like that. And, and Ruth's mum's in a care home and, you know, she can't visit her. And it's all, you know, it's, well, it's, it's stressful. If it's stressful for, for a lot of people. You just have to keep, sometimes you can be seduced into thinking all this lovely weather and everything. Oh, it's marvellous. It's like a holiday, but it's, um, it's all an illusion really, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it, it's a difficult time. And obviously people are reacting in different ways and people have different things to worry about. And I guess if it, if it has, if, if COVID-19 has touched your family in any way, then, you know, you have a different uh, way of looking at it. Um, this seems evident to me when I see people walking around, not social distancing, not wearing a mask, not really adhering to common sense, it seems to me. Um, and I think if you have got somebody in your family that have had it, or a friend or so on, I'm, it, it, it beggars belief, really. But you know, even my stepdaughter, who's 24, she, she said the thing is our age group, because she's, she's here now, and they're just behaving as if it's normal, you know. And she said it's because it hasn't affected our, our age group. And I said, yeah, but you can carry it. You're, and she said, she's like, I, I mean, she's not stupid. She said, I know, but I went out with some friends thinking we were all going to social distance, and they didn't. And when I was, they were just taking the mick out of me. I said, well, let them take the mick out of you, because I, I'm not going to see you until you've you know, and, and, and unless I know you haven't got it. So yeah. that's just the kind of how it how it's rolling, isn't it, really? Um, where's Ruth this morning, Eamon? Well, Ruth has Ruth has left. Ruth's always up. She's an early bird and um, she she has gone. She has got an intensive day at QVC. She she has this fashion range which she's designed there, Susie, and oh my god, she gives it her heart, her body, her soul. Um, she lives and breathes it. So she's very dedicated. She's off there to do planning. I'm not sure she's got one or two shows tonight, but that will be for her. I'll not see her until I think it's about half past 10 tonight, which is no bad thing, but <laughs> it's a long day. It's a long day for her. Yes. And um, she's, um, you know, things for her are different. She had Loose Women uh, yesterday. Um, she just, did two editions of that, one live, one recorded, which goes out today. And then we have this morning, tomorrow. So from my point of view, 
this morning once a week has been you know has been a bit of a lifeline in terms of just sort of keeping you engaged and keeping you feeling purposeful and, and whatever so we look forward to that and then actually next week is a a half term although nobody will probably remember but um so ruth and i will be on monday to friday next week so are you excited about that well it's different get you out of the house doesn't it you know and it's um I don't know who really watches in uh, when the weather's good. I mean, you don't. I don't think you sit in and watch um, daytime TV, but you, you like to think you provide a service and sanity. And, and then I always remember so many people don't have a garden or so many people are immobile or so many people are elderly or lonely and the TV is their, their friend. And, and that's why I get very annoyed and very passionate about this uh, BBC government because they're both in it together proposal of um you know charging over 75 year olds for a tv license over 75 years of age i mean so many people have so so little company in their lives at that age as my mother says and she's 92 you know everybody i know is gone she said so so the tv becomes a friend and people who pop up on, on tv as regular fixtures become friends to them people people need their television and you know, I, I just think it's immoral to charge. And, and this equally applies. It's easy to lump it on the BBC and say it's their fault. But this was a government decision under George Osborne um, to, to do this. And I just think, really, I mean, the country's broke anyway. The country's broke. We were, we were broke before we went into this crisis. And, and now, I mean, it's very hard to argue any case um for for public spending i suppose because these are just this is just awful times for everybody but for goodness sake if this crisis is shown as one thing it's how vulnerable the elderly are and uh, give them a break for what's involved I, I think if you put it to a vote if you put that to a referendum who's going to say no don't ch charge people charge people over 75 for their license i mean they've only you know, served their country, they've lived a life, they've done everything they've had to do, and then you, you hit them with their 135 quid or whatever it is. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I think you're right. I can't imagine anybody would disagree uh, with that unless they didn't have a heart or a heart of stone, because uh, it just seems, both of my parents are over 75, and I'm sure they'd love to not have to pay for their TV license. They watch TV a lot, they can get out, and they have got a garden, but they do. My mum loves watching television. She watches the soaps, you know, she watches yeah. a bit of daytime. She watches you. She loves you. And, you know. But the principle, Susie, it's not about whether they can afford it or not or anything else. It's just the principle. I come... How come you could, you know, you can get a free ride on a bus when you're over 60 or a train or whatever it is, but come 75, you're going to have to pay for your TV licence? Nah, it's not right. No, I agree. I agree with you. Let's hope that that's, that changes. Um, so, so you aren't seeing Ruth tonight until late, but you do obviously yeah. spend loads of time together. I'm going to just tell you something now. I'm so in love with Ruth. I, I thought you were her. going to say you're still in love with me. You've disappointed me. She's not around to half ten. You had your choice. You had a chance. <laughs> to have. Missed it. I Missed it. love your wife. And the reason I love her, well, there are, there are many reasons I love her, but um, she's obviously brilliant at what she does. I mean, I, I think she's a fantastic broadcaster. Um, I think she's the most patient woman in the world. <laughs> And I'm not just talking about with you when you get a bit pissed off when, you, when you're clearly talking to someone and thinking, what the bloody hell is this? But also, she must be thinking that sometimes. And she just always keeps her cool and asks the questions, doesn't she? Well, honestly, some of the features that you guys do, I'm watching thinking, how can she keep a straight face? But she does. Because she's, she's a... She's a pleaser and she's, um, she likes doing the right thing. You know, when I've never really liked, I sort of like pushing the boundaries, being a bit more mischievous, but Ruth's like the, the goody two shoes at school. You know, she will do exactly what she's told to do. And then so everybody, I call her the lovely Ruth because everywhere I go, people say, Ruth's lovely, Ruth's lovely, Ruth's lovely. And then I say, you should try living with her and see how lovely she is. So <laughs> I call her the lovely Ruth. I say, you're the lovely Ruth. But uh, Ruthie's very nice to people, very good, very professional. Um, but, you know, she just draws the line with me. She just, you know, that's, that's it. So um, it, is, it is what it is. We do things differently. And, um, and uh, you know, 
thankfully most people seem to like it a lot of people don't get it a lot of people are very critical of what we do but we are we are, at least we're real at least we're real which is a very unusual thing well, in broadcast that's what i was going to say first of all you are real and, and one of the uh, i wonder whether one of the reasons why it works so well for so many people is it's their marriage on screen playing out in front of them isn't it Yes, despite what people say, I think we get a lot of people saying that's just like me and my husband or, you know, whatever way round it is. It's not necessarily that I represent all men and she represents all women, but we can sort of um, switch those roles. But um, relationships, as we all know, are are, are uh, complex and they are quirky at times. And look, wh whatever it is, it, it works. You know, we've... we've um, at the end of the day, we, we, we love each other and um, that we respect each other. I think we respect each other. And, you know, despite what, what, what people say, you, you know, Ruth is never a victim, never a pushover, never anything. She's a very, very strong individual. And um, we have a, a good, healthy relationship. It's not that we agree on everything. Matter of fact, she doesn't agree on anything. If I say black, she says white. And she just, it's like she makes a point of deliberately disagreeing with me, which is very annoying. <laughs> uh, but it's also very entertaining and it plays out beautifully on the yes. TV. And you guys have been yes. together for so long now. I mean, clearly there's a healthy respect between, between the two of you. And um, I was looking through some clips last night of this morning because I don't get to see it very often because of work and, and yeah. everything. But, yeah. but it is an extended family member, isn't it, this morning? You know, it's been going for so long. And oh, actually, that's something I wanted to ask you about. Because originally, Ruth was up for the, the kind of female presenting role, wasn't she, against Fern? Because Fern was on here the other day. And um, obviously, kind of Fern got the, the full-time role. But Ruth came in and, and you know, did some days and, and obviously now works a lot more and is the longest serving presenter I think on, on this morning currently. She was actually yeah she is um, a yeah. fact that's often forgotten but um, yeah she's that, that's very true yeah. And sh so when when it happened that they said oh we want you to present it together how how did she take that because she must have I'll been really exactly. lucky to her gig. I remember where I was, and I remember getting the news. We were we were in Belfast, and um, I don't think I was doing a lot at the time. And I turned to her and I said, "Great news! ITV want us to do this morning together." And I had this massive big smile on my face because GMTV had come to an end for me, and um, and she just looked at me and went, "I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want to work with you." <laughs> and that is her, and that was that was how I was greeted into the fold, and um, and that and that's that's the way that's the way she is. She's very, she's um, she's a bit of a lone wolf. She's very. I mean, I'm much more gregarious than she is. I'm much more. Um, I'm no good to say team player. I'm not a team player. I wouldn't say I'm a team player. But I would. Um, I like company. I like bouncing off people. Um, and I thought, oh, this is a good, this is this is a good opportunity. This is fantastic. Um, but no, she wasn't keen for that at all. That took a lot of persuading. And I think, really, whenever that happened, 17, 18 years ago, I think she's been slightly resentful ever since. Like, <laughs> you shut up. This is my gig. It's not your gig. I think there's a bit of that. I think there's a bit of that uh, go, goes with her. No, she wasn't keen at all. She wasn't keen at all, no. Well, obviously, it's worked beautifully. Before we move away from this morning, I, I did watch a clip last night where you were lying on a couch and not sitting on a couch for a change. And there was a shaman next to you. Yes. Now, yes. come on, tell me the truth. Because I didn't know whether to be interested or laugh because I wasn't sure whether you were faking or not. No, no. Um, I, I'd never heard of shamans or shamanisms. Uh, but they they can this man was Gwyneth Paltrow's shaman and they connect you with the spirit world and everything that's going around, around you and people who are guiding you and and folk who are in your life and all that sort of thing. And my my point about that is, which is my point about most things is have a bit of an open mind about it. Now, Ruthie is so was so be so frightened of anything like that in case I my view is that they would find something out or they would tell her something. She wanted nothing to do with it. She wanted no reading. She didn't want him to lay his hands on her or anything like that. So I said, yeah, I'll give it a, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. And it was, look, whether I believe it or not, whether you believe it or not, he believes it. He believes it. And then amazingly, um, one of my really, really good mates, 
uh, really good friend. I was talking to him the other day, and he said to me, we were talking about his wife, and he said to me, yeah, she's just completing her degree in shaman shamanism. I said, what? And he said, yeah, she's really, she's into this. This is what she does and whatever. Um, so look, I just think you get to an age and stage where you think, there's got to be more to the world. There's got to be something else. Why not? What's the worst that can happen? Test it out, try it out, see what's there, see what, see if there's anything okay. going on. But you know when you were lying there and he was saying, he was yes. talking to the, the spirit guide and he was saying, uh, release, make, you know, your, and you were, you were doing it seemingly to order. Now, that, was that involuntary or were you kind of playing along for telly? No, I wasn't playing along with telly. Okay. Not, not playing along with telly. Do you know why sometimes people say, when you see a hypnotism act and whatever, now, I've never really worked out when people say run around the stage and cluck like a chicken or whatever. I've never really worked out are they playing along or not. But I can genuinely say to you there, I was lucky enough, I'm, I'm quite relaxed in a TV studio, so therefore I'm not really aware of cameras and things that go on around me. So I was okay, and I it was the power of suggestion from him. And I think at one stage he said, laugh, did he? Or yeah. let let out um, energy through laughter or whatever. And once somebody tells you to laugh, I mean, if I tell you to laugh now, if I say, right, Susie, give me a laugh, give me a smile, give me a chuckle. It's coming up your tummy, it's going up your whatever else comes next, out your mouth. You Look, look, there it is, there it is. You're doing it, you're doing it. So it's a sort of release of energy. Um, I look, I just thought, I thought it was good, but I wasn't, I wasn't playing along to telly, which annoyed Ruth even more, because she said to me, you could have said anything. Anything could have happened there. You could have found out anything. So, and he, he may well, <laughs> you know. Like some skeletons to find out. And that, that's, that's really interesting to know. My, actually, I've got a good friend who is a shaman. So it is, it is something I... Oh, right, so you know more about it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and actually, she's helped me in the past with things and um, kind of opened my mind to uh, healing and and stuff mainly. So, uh, yeah, I am. So I am very open-minded about a lot of things because I think just because you can't see something or you don't know about it, it doesn't mean that you know it can't be a part of your life. And um, I am a big believer in energy. And, and if people are laughing at me now, they're also laughing at you. Remember that. I don't care. <laughs> it won't be the first time. <laughs> anyway, uh, we need to talk a little bit about football because yesterday, it seems, according to certain news outlets, which might be nonsense, that Man United think they're going to sign Raul Jimenez and Adam, Adam Traore, and it ain't going to happen. I didn't hear that you said about, sorry, give me that again. <laughs> Uh, I read yesterday. Yes, they're going to sign who? That, you, that Manchester United would quite like to sign Adama Traore and Raúl Jiménez. Yeah. Um, well, you, I mean, those, those transfer rumours, you know, they go on all the time. Um, I do think Manchester United are probably just, you know, two signings or so away from, you know, being challengers again. I, I really do believe the momentum is there. I also find out, Susie, and I don't know what you're like, but how much I really miss football. And I, I wouldn't describe myself as a fanatic, but it's there. It's part of my fabric in everyday life. I have such admiration. I mean, I, I was at um, Wolves at the, in October or so last, uh, last year when we got a 1-1 draw uh, with you guys. You are so impressive under Espirito Santo. Um, I, I think Wolverhampton Wanderers, Bat, <laughs> they bat way above, or they punch way above their weight. I think they are a tremendous success story. You know, like Sheffield United, you know, doing so well. What are they, six, seven, six, uh, yeah, or so in the league? You, you must be, you must be really thrilled. What's what's going on there? Right. I mean, it's honestly, uh, it changed our lives as Wolves fans uh, completely because you know you kind of went from this to. To this sort of thing and, and I still feel like we are climbing um, with obviously great investment, great staff, great direction and great players and a, and a great team that all play together and seemingly all get on really well and it's so, you know, it's so different for us to have all the elements at once and a chance to, you know, go go yeah. right to the top really and, and playing well, in the I know you, you've made some good signings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, absolutely. We also need, but you know, the point I'd like to make is 
they always they talk about top four teams and they talk about who they've got to sign and all that sort of thing. But then you look at teams like Wolves, like Sheffield United, and you say, look at that squad. How do they challenge so well? How do they how do they play so well as a as a unit and individuals within it? And a lot of it's got to be with the team spirit, with the manager as well. So it's not just about signing big names and spending a lot of money, which incidentally I just think there'll be a complete realignment. I, I'm just not sure things will go back to the way they were in terms of fees, salaries, agents' fees. But you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I like to think. I sit here talking to you today, and all I can hear outside are, are birds ch ch chirping. And I think, were they always there? Um, but the airplanes will come back to the skies. The M25 will fill up again. Um, or, or will we all change? Because I don't know about you, but you, you obviously, you travel so much. You're traveling all the time and um, meetings and things. How much of our lives are, in my view, wasted with meetings? And I think from here on in, rather than spending 90 minutes going into London, 90 minutes back, three hours of my day, I would just be saying to people, we'll do it via Zoom. Yes. We'll do it by video conference will do the, and and I think that's a good thing for people because it's not needed all this unnecessary work travel talking about talking it just is not needed and um, and and I don't mean that just in a selfish way because you get time back for yourself but also the environment gets time to heal um, things surely things have to change. Surely they have to change. I know we're headed for an awful recession, and it's going to be so hard for so many people. But I think our, our balance is what what we value. I mean, I, I, I in my house here, what this time off has given me is to realise how much stuff I have in my house, useless stuff, useless stuff in bathroom cabinets, in medicine cabinets, in drawers, in what have I got this stuff for? Because some adverts told me to get it or that would be a good idea or I've had a few quid extra and I've spent it on it. I genuinely think at the end of all of this, I would be a much more simplified person, a, a much more appreciative person, um, much more humble person, I think, um, as well. But do you not think thing, things will change? I, I hope that they will change. And I think, you know, in, in the respect of what you've just talked about, we're all become more energised as well, which would be a good thing. I think as a nation, we've become a dispose, we've been used to a disposable lifestyle, which is appalling uh, for the environment, for our pockets, for ourselves. There's, there's no need. I think we should all strip back uh, what we don't need, what we're, what we're not using. Don't buy so much stuff generally, whether it's clothes, food, I find yeah. that I found myself being really pedantic about not wasting any food at all and cooking whatever's in the door of the fridge cooking, which I do anyway, but hugely while I've had the time at home, I've kind of used everything until we go shopping to get any more food. And I think it sort of reminds me. Of oh, you're back. You're back. Like disconnect and try and reconnect with Susie Perry. Wait a minute. Susie Perry live video. Let me see if I can do this. Folks, sorry, I'm with Susie Perry 100. Oh. Susie, Susie. You, Su Susie, are you there? Susie, you're there. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> so, Susie, am I not, are you now on my Instagram? Is that what's happened? Yeah. You see, I, this was, this was, I mean, I'm sitting talking to you, and then we lost the signal, and you froze, and whatever it is. And then I pressed some button, and then it said I was live on Instagram. So yeah. by accident, I was then broadcasting and having my own channel today when I'm supposed to be on your show. But now, are we back? Are we? No, no, we're only. You're now on my show. That's the way it is. This is. I want to tell people. I want to tell people in case you don't follow Susie or anything. Is Susie Perry? What can I say? I've known her for many, many years. She is an eminent broadcaster an absolutely superb broadcaster motorsport is her thing you will have known her from shows like the gadget show and um, as well she's an incredibly uh, talented journalist she is a tremendous interviewer but you are and i ha and you have my professional respect and you know people often say you know people like you and me 
don't get enough praise. But you know when you were a pro, pro, you know when you sit and you know as a pro who's a really top drawer pro. That's what I think when I look at you, Susie. Oh, Eamon, thank you. I'm so glad I've popped onto your breakfast show. <laughs> well, um, breakfast. Well. Thank you. Um, well, you know, we just do what we do, don't we? But I think there is a technical side to being a broadcaster and there is the ability, I suppose, to be able to talk about nothing sometimes when you're filling or... I remember doing a show a couple of years ago at Silverstone where it rained for five and a half hours solidly and we were live on air and we didn't have one bike on track all day and we filled for five and a half hours and that's probably the show that I'm most proud of because we kept it going and actually our viewing figures were not far off what they normally are when the well, bikes were not the track. We see, isn't that amazing? But I know what that's like because when I joined Sky News, I had to perfect the art of speaking about nothing, really. And I remember one day, um, it was was a Western Supermare Pier burnt down. And we had a camera on it by complete accident. There was somebody lived locally, it was on their holidays, or whatever. And so from 6.15 in the morning until 10 a.m., we had a camera on Western Supermare Pier. And I had to talk about that pier burning down. And people love watching a fire. They just love watching it and it being described and the pier burnt down before their very eyes. But the thing I'm going to say to you is, because I know that feeling that you've got there, we are not paid for when it goes right. We are paid for when it goes wrong. That is the real test. That is the real test. Well, it certainly went wrong this morning and here we are chatting. So we've got that right, haven't we? But <laughs> well, what, else, think... what else should we talk about? What else? I mean, will we, will we, so Susie had invited me on. She had this breakfast show and I thought, I don't want to do breakfast anymore. I don't want to get up at this time of the morning. Um, and then she, she got me up at nine o'clock, which is civilised, which is not really very early in the morning, but it is it's it is what it is. And Susie is in the south of France there where she's in isolation. She's she's stuck there, which is a pretty good place to be stuck. And, um, and that was it. So... Yeah. It was going well, it was going well. It was going really well, we were having a lovely chat and I had some questions for you which might be not maybe tailored to the people that are following you so much. So I won't rattle through those too much, but uh, one of the sort of general questions uh, that people wanted to know was, uh, what's Keith Lemon really like? Oh, do you know, can I tell you, he is the nicest man in the world. There are There are a lot of people that I wouldn't give house room to um on on the you know cynical horrible nasty comedian type people and then there are is keith lemon who's the kindest nicest man he's completely filthy he's filthy and i tell him constantly he should be taken off tv i, I sort of see it as a crusade i'm like a mary white house on his show <laughs> you know how filthy he is. and the thing is when my wife goes on that show or he talks about my wife, she's the sort, she laughs at his filthy humour. And then that annoys me even more. He's filthy, but he is the nicest. He is, he's a genius. He is a genius. Yeah, and uh, I'm, really I'm very, very fond of him. He's almost cut his own genre in television with, with, with his humour, with his filthy humour. But it, he can't help but laugh at it. I mean, honestly, this, the, the celebrity juice, it's just a thing of wonder isn't it really and you work with him a lot I mean you've obviously filmed with him a lot but you know Susie so we did a celebrity juice recently um from lockdown uh, at home and it wasn't funny in the slightest it was pretty bad it was very poor and it was nothing without him he comes and he gives it energy he sprinkles a stardust on it he does whatever he does and it turns out Hilarious, hilarious, because he is that sort of genius. Don't ask me. You can't replicate it. I mean, if, 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 if Keith gave that up, it wouldn't be a question of saying, who will now do that? Because he is a complete no. one-off. Whatever that talent is, that talent for filth is, is unique to him. But do you know who the funniest person is who makes me cry with laughter? Barry Humphreys, DM Edna Average. And it's a complete... An, utter honour to interview a comedy genius like that. The funniest, funniest, most intellectual person, absolutely brilliant. And that has always been a an absolute honour to have uh, to interview and, and, and met met him over the years. 
I think some of the funniest television moments have come from him. I mean, the ones that really make you belly laugh and just snort with laughter. It's snort. somebody that has, has their own kind of sense of humour, isn't it? Really, yeah. it really, I think, ticks. I mean, it probably divides people as well. It's like Monty Python, you know, there's some stuff that's brilliant, there's some stuff that you're like, meh. But that's, that's comedy, isn't it? That's comedy goal. When you get somebody that's brave enough to go out and push their sense of humour, and it's not kind of bland and just one-liners that, I mean, obviously, you know, you have the comedians that are kings of one-liners, but for me, that, that I don't like that kind of humour. But, yeah, the kind of humour you're describing there, it gets I love, me all the time. You know, the other, the other person that makes me laugh tremendously is Peter Kay. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of um, Irish connection with his with his uh, humour as well because his mum's from, from Northern Ireland and um, I get a lot of what he does. And Car Share, I don't know if you've ever done the subject. I love Car Share. Oh my word, what a genius concept. Just, just brilliant, brilliant. And, and that, is be that was beautiful watching, absolutely beautiful watching. Um, yes, yeah, so, so cleverly written. They wrote it together, didn't they? The pair of them wrote it together. And the yes, outtakes are funny, aren't they? The outtakes are just oh, oh, just that that's what it's like to work with someone who you bounce off and who brings out the best in you and um, you know, that sort of um the thing about pairings in broadcasting is and you'll have you'll have had this as well, there's some people who you are telepathic with that um you don't need to ask. I mean, in a way Ruth and I uh, would be would be like that. We could finish each other's sentences. I know exactly how she thinks. I know exactly she thinks differently than me, but I know exactly how she thinks, and she knows how I think. But even though we don't think the same, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, no, I do. And I, well, I was thinking of, of the two of you, and I think that's why it works so well on camera. And I think actually the viewers even know which which way Ruth's going to go because she will always sort of stay on the straight and narrow when she's broadcasting, whereas you'll kind of you know run rings around and. Uh, a bit sort of like a naughty boy sometimes kind That's of you know, just just prodding a little bit just pushing the That's boundaries me. a bit more which leads That's me to me. ask you to this question you've been a hard news journalist you know you've covered um rolling news which is very difficult to do and and also the lightest of entertainment features so you've kind of done everything really where do you sit on actually getting pleasure from broadcasting what do you enjoy the most i mean it's great obviously to have both sides um, honestly, I really miss news, and I've got a lot of um, views on the way news is presented in this country. And um, I know I could go in and edit news programs and shake them up tremendously. I just think we're slightly old-fashioned the way we do news, but um, but really respect for news reporters and people who get the story out there and their understanding of the story. So. I think I was always at my happiest on Sky News because I didn't know what was going to happen next and I enjoyed the immediacy. And you will know from doing sports programs as well, you know, for people who can't see uh, the connection between, say, giving the football results on a Saturday afternoon and presenting Sky News in terms of breaking news come in or presenting you know, uh, an election programme or the Eurovision Song Contest, it all requires the same um, technique yeah. and translation into getting the immediacy and the urgency of what you're talking about across there. And and everything is often, I think, as journalists, we make programmes for other journalists and you've got to make them for the public and you've got to make them relevant. So I... I Live, live for me has always been brilliant. Though the caveat to that is, um, I've, I've just finished a two-year stint on talk radio, and I did, Susie, quite honestly find the constant talk about Brexit, and and then when we, we, we that's now changed to coronavirus. But breakfast, I, uh, Brexit, I find so negative, so draining. So many angry people out there, angry, angry, angry. And I think sometimes maybe it's right to let people vent on and, and, and what they're saying. But I, I find that the negativity of news and the negativity of the stories that you would cover definitely dragged me down. It does have an effect, effect on you. And I think from that point of view, it was right to step away and it's right to have a bit of a rest and a refresh about that sort of thing. Yeah, I can imagine that. I mean, even just listening to too much news, uh, which is obviously dominated by not good things. I know some channels are trying to put some 
feel good stuff in there, which is great. But listening to too much news is draining. So actually reporting on, on news all the time, I can imagine that you must have felt shattered after, after that, yeah. particularly Brexit, but also Corona now, I think. I personally yeah. only have a look at the news twice a day in the morning and in the evening and not before I go to bed either because I don't want to be thinking about it while I'm trying to get to sleep because otherwise it's it's rolling and not not a lot changes mm. you can get your nuggets of information at the beginning and the end of the day and that's all you need because also you've got to be careful where you get your news from haven't you because you really want to be sort of looking at different channels if you follow one channel all the time then you you are being heard in one direction i think unless you feel as though there is an absolutely fair uh, broadcasting channel that does it right all the time and i don't think it's possible that there there is an, a, a news broadcaster that, that that does hit the nail on the head every single time it, it can't be possible so then no. it's down to you to to look and, and also to have you. Yeah, it's like buying the one newspaper all the time. If you buy the one newspaper, you get spared the one line, I, I, I suppose. Um, and, and, and variation is, is great. But I always, you know, I, I always reserve people's right to question and keep on questioning and thinking. But like you, I think that there's only so much news you can digest. What are the fatalities? What are the figures? What is the advice? What else is happening in the world? Well, very little is happening in the world um, uh, because of what, what is going on. But yes, I think um, we should all keep informed. Um, I actually find news as a form of entertainment, uh, you know, and uh, almost as a, a way of relaxation. I'm not talking about the current situation. I'm certainly not talking about uh, the poisonous atmosphere around uh, Brexit, but I do find if news is there to inform, to educate, and to entertain in a way, um, that is that's a nice cocktail. That's a nice cocktail to have. Yeah. Yeah, because it shouldn't all be bad news. I mean, it would be good to have more motivational news. And I wonder whether this situation might slightly change editors' views on that. And maybe you know they will have a look at um, things that might have seemed light and fluffy before, and just. I mean, not talking about a cat being rescued from a tree, but you know what you I'm saying, people that are stuff. doing good things. Yeah, positive things. I, I know exactly what you mean. And, you, you know, and, and I think sensible discussions about things, when all of this is over, it's fine everybody going out on a Thursday night and applauding uh, carers and applauding the NHS and applauding people on the front line. But when all this is over, and oh my goodness me, the country will be broke. But there's no point applauding carers and then paying them appalling wages and treating them uh, badly because they're doing things that we all know we should be doing ourselves and for various reasons we can't, won't, don't or choose not to. And I think these are people who should be elevated in society in, in so many ways. So I think a serious conversation needs to happen further down the line as to who we value in society, their roles, their jobs, the skills. And instead of this media compulsion, of promoting reality here today, gone tomorrow, people. Why don't you look at scientists, at engineers, at pioneers, at people who are working in labs to create the vaccine for this COVID-19? They should be made into the heroes. Um, you know, again, easier said than done, but that's the value we've got to place on, on kids' lives and educate them that that's what they should aspire to not not to appear on, you know, Love Island as if that's the be-all and the end-all of, of anybody's life. Well, I certainly think that the people that you've just talked about um, should just be paid properly. I think that they probably say we just want to, you know, be paid properly so we can, you know, live a good life and, that, and that's what they want to do. I did read something the other day where it said a lot of young people were looking at going into nursing because of what's happened, because they want yeah. to have that feeling of, you know, being uh, worth something in society. And actually my two very best friends are, were ITU nurses and I grew up thinking oh god they're, they're amazing what do I do just talk mm -hmm. you know yes and it, and it would be good but obviously they do need to be supported um financially and uh, it would be good if that changed as well when we come out of this if we all look at our lives and we slim down what we don't need and we take time a bit more time for people and a bit more time to breathe for ourselves I think then perhaps you know we would all be a little happier wouldn't we we talk about slim down in more ways than one. Um, thank goodness I'm losing weight and I know why. It's not it's not overly deliberately. I've now got more time. I'm less rushed. I'm not eating on the hoof. 
I can, I've got time to exercise where I'm not sitting in a car in and out of London or sitting at various meetings and whatever. And I just sort of think, I don't want to go back to that. I don't want to go back to where it's fast, fast, move, move, one job to the next job, whatever. I just sort of think, I just want to find, uh, in a way, I want to invest more in me and I want to maybe be slightly more selfish, if that um, sort of makes sense. But, you know, you know, again, I, I, I look at someone like you and I always get great inspiration when I think you think you're the only person in the world that's getting up at four o'clock in the morning to catch a plane or, you know, preparing to work late or whatever it happens to be. And then I tune into somebody like you and other other people, no matter what their job is. I always think of I always think of um, uh, however early you check into an airport. The, the check-in desk, they're already there. The baggage handlers are already there. The people working in the canteens are already there. It, it is amazing to realize that, in a way, it is a 24-hour society, and so many people work so very hard. And maybe we all shouldn't be working as hard as, as we are. Maybe there'll be a reset button after, after all this. Yeah, that would be good. I, I think it's true. I think, you know, we've realised, a lot of people have realised that they can work much more from home. So maybe the structure of working will change. A lot of meetings don't need to happen. You know, a lot of meetings can be done virtually. So it saves on going into work. It means you can be at home. It means you can have a bit more time for your family, for your kids, for yourself. It's, it's win-win, isn't it, really? And if everybody yeah. pulls together and says, I want to do that, I want to work like that, then surely it will happen. And I'm, I'm sure you know, owners of businesses feel exactly the same way. And, you know, I've heard people talking about the, their, their personnel and, and how they want them to only come back when it's right. And, and it's good, yeah. you know, it's good to consider, you should treat everybody else how you want to be treated yourself and not get caught up in this whole big wave of must do this, must do that. Must, you know, you, you have to do what's right for yourself. And I do think in the UK that we work far too long hours and and too hard um because everybody you know is trying to have this lifestyle and i understand obviously we all need to pay bills and and, and have money and and have income but i do find if you get too busy that you end up spending a bit more on something because you haven't got time and then it's detrimental and you're actually you know just running out of energy and you haven't got any more money in your pocket you haven't got any more time with your family you know, so it's just sort of having a look at the balance of what works for you, isn't it, really? Well, I've realised that time is the greatest gift that you have, that you can give to somebody. Time, you know, with someone who's lonely or, or someone who's just a friend to cultivate your, your friendship uh, relationships or whatever. And also time for your, yourself. Time, time used wisely. Is, is is a tremendous thing and it's something that we have in our hands and it's something that we can decide uh, how to use. So often it's decided by other people, of course, that's that's the thing. But it's the, one of the great conundrums of, of life, you know, and, and if nothing else, it's got us all talking, it's got us all appreciating. If I didn't have time today and you didn't have time, we wouldn't be talking. And, um, you know, and that's and that's lovely as, as somebody, you're somebody I always feel that, when I, you know, even though I haven't spoken to you for two years or something, I can I can just pick up where we left off because Instagram makes the world a smaller place. We we know what, what's going on in our lives. We understand our business and and we're we're curious about about each other and and what we do and what we're we're up to. So this has been a a lovely pleasant surprise um today. Thank you. Oh well, thank you. That's good. And um, thank you for everybody that's been joining in and, and sending little messages and being a part of this chat and uh, all being a part together which is what it's about isn't it really um oh yeah I'm and Susie, having... are you on again tomorrow are you on again do you do this every day um i do it i was doing it every day Eamon, but in and in regard to what we just talked about it got a little bit too much i was doing monday to saturday but i was also doing saturday and sunday for bt sport which is yeah, obviously eight days in a week which is crackers listening to everyone saying oh it's super chill you know this little yeah. chat that we started doing to connect with people and to be a sort of familiar face if you like on instagram it, it got quite big and um you know i invited sort of friends like you to come on a chat and um yeah it kind of took over my life and i thought hang on a minute i i need some time back here and i need to concentrate on what i'm doing at the weekend for bt so we've slimmed it back so we're doing wednesdays thursdays and fridays 
and and it's really lovely and lo and a lot of the people that have met in this breakfast club are going to meet up afterwards you know and they i see them chatting with each other on the timeline and a lot of these you know a lot of the breakfast clubbers they live on their own they live in apartments don't have a garden don't, you know and this has become a real uh, real thing for them and it's been um, amazing to be a, a part of that so I've, I've, i enjoy it as well you know i get something back from from that so it's a sort of two-way street but yeah it's been really fun and we've had you know great people have been coming on and just chatting without any um walls around you know carol vorderman's been on james martin popped in bev knight jack savaris we've had sort of music and sports stars obviously a lot of bikers and 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 drivers and um and, and stevie ball from you know from walls popped on one day it's just been an eclectic mix of chatting with people and and for me you know it's a, a dream thing to be able to do to sit and just chat with different people so I've, I've, I'm loving it. It's just really great just to do, you know, what you want to do. And I've stuck all the content on YouTube and I'm thinking, oh, do you know what? I'm going to make some other things that I like doing and stick it on YouTube and stop chasing the linear television world that does your yeah. head in, you know, when people, you go for a meeting and then they nick your idea and give it to somebody else or, you know, how it is. It's just, that's just the way it is. But it's, you know, I, I love broadcasting. I, I love working in television. And I hope to carry on doing that for, you know, for years to come. But I also see now that there's another world out there where you can create your own content. And if people like it, great. And if they don't, well, that's okay, because you've made something that you wanted to make, you know, and, and, that's, um, and that's a really nice thing to do, because I think that energises energizes you for, for your family and for, you know, people around you. So it's all good. Well, thanks for energising me today. That's very, very good of you. It's lovely to see you. Lovely and see you. as you say, when this is all over, um, we must... Well, there's me saying, I'm only going to do Zooms. In your case, I'll make an exception. We can <laughs> well, meet you up. Can, you can come over here. <laughs> <laughs> God bless. Like lovely you. seeing you. Don't forget, you've got to post it afterwards. This is from the Geordie Lodger. It says, don't forget to post it when it offers you... That's what you have to do. Post it to IGTV. Oh. Okay, Eamon? When you end Sorry. it... I, I, sorry, I can't read that, but I post what we have just done. Actually, do you know what? I think I can do it from here. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, you do it from there. You do it. Me and Techno, I'm a bit, I'm a bit behind the times and all that. But I'll try, I'll, do I just press the button then that says post it? Yes, exactly. IGTV. Okay, IGTV. IGTV. Okay, love. Look after yourself. Lovely seeing you, Susie. You She's too. Susie K100. She has her breakfast club on a Wednesday, Thursday, and a Friday. Be there or be square. Thank I you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B